You are now listening to the West Side of T H A AfterParty dot com. Yo yo yo! It's your boy Sneaky from R and R Recognition and Respect. Tune in every Monday from eight to nine to catch up with me and my adventures, and hear from my guests ranging from artists to entrepreneurs and much, much more. Catch us every Monday of the week on the West Side of the After Party. See you at the party, y'all. Helsings. Bitches. Watch out for leeches and snitches Out here it's all about a crease of your riches Gotta hold your spot down deep in the trenches Got a homie name on the run right now Wherever he's at he got a gun right now Teach important lessons to my sons right now Back then so we didn't have the funds right now Have fun right now, kick smiles to a minimal That scene is weakness to a criminal Every conversation is an interview Snakes in the grass, sharks in the swimming pool Rats smell cheese, start sniffing and all that Run with wildcats, I don't know where the dog's at But if it's him, call a catcher Paramedics come and put a nigga on the stretcher Courtesy, bro, I'm finna get your ass up out of here with urgency, yo They wanna murder me, though Both ways when you cross This is way more than you talk Watch where you walk Keep your body outside the chalk All the same fly is a Cops used to tell me Look both ways when you cross This is way more than you talk Watch where you walk Keep your body outside the chalk And all the same fly is a Cops used to tell me Look both ways when you cross This is way more than you talk Watch where you walk Keep your body outside the chalk And all the same fly is a Cops used to tell me Look both ways when you cross This is way more than you talk Watch where you walk with your boy Sneaky coming to you from the west side of the after party. Another beautiful day in L.A. I had a crazy, crazy week. If you remember from last episode, I had back-to-back events pretty much every day. Um, I'm exhausted, but uh, we're out here doing it all the time. Overslept, just got to the studio. Um, But every show is only possible because of my sponsors. So I want to shout out Tony Grants, who uh, is now sponsoring the show. And um, that was his song, actually, that you heard coming in to the intro. And let me just pull up his copy real quick because I am totally not prepared right now. But uh, following his debut 
EP headshot available everywhere hip hop is sold or streamed. LA's own Tony Grands is back with his second project, Potholes and Palm Trees. It's only six songs and comes in a little under 21 minutes. This means he gets right to business without a lot of filler time and wasting. Every rapper should be so astute. Produced entirely by Helsing Beats, a production team from Indonesia, the album has a unique tone and original vibration to it. If you enjoy hip hop that doesn't sound like it rolled off the factory line 10 minutes ago, give Potholes and Palm Trees a spin. Or three so that's tony grants i appreciate him uh he was a guest on the episode so if you look back in uh past podcasts you could find him my other sponsors do drop the lights they are a wake and bake company well they're actually a edible company my guests are over here laughing at my sponsors that's cool though that's cool uh Home of the Wake and Bake Bar, a TH-infused breakfast bar with oats, nuts, dried fruit, and chocolate. Great in the morning with coffee or tea. Perfect for an on-the-go snack and pick-me-up. Comes in four awesome flavors. I ate a couple today because my back was hurting me, and that's probably why I showed up late to the studio. But, you know, hey, no one's perfect. Um, day one sponsor, Night Flare Company, a film, music production, and booking company. Services include work with our film crew, Napalm Monkey Productions, and Flying Chim Studio. Live sound and recording by JQ Sound, studio recording and producer Frankie Valentine. I help out with entertainment and consulting for marketing and promotional needs. We also put together events with Alternative Shows LA and other collaborators like Demias from the Blue Line District. Every second and fourth Wednesday, uh, Night Flare sponsors the Blue Line District Van Slam Open Mic at the Stardust Club in Downey. So uh, if you're interested in going to open mic either seeing performers or maybe getting up and trying your own stuff it's a perfect opportunity to start getting you know get some stage time get some practice midnight motives their album is now available on visions so go stream that anywhere uh, music is sold and streamed and La Clica Podcast, if you're a Spotify user, all the current episodes ever since La Clica was on are now on Spotify, so we've teamed up. They've added me to Spotify, Samsung, Google, and like 20 other podcast streaming things, so we're getting the message out there, and I super appreciate them. So Adventure Time, man. I had way too many things going on last week, but uh, let me just give you the quick, quick highlights. Um... Wednesday at Los Globos was really fucking dope. We had a super dope turnout considering like promotion was light and uh, it was during the week and there was a cover charge. But, you know, we had our little Nipsey Hustle tribute. We passed out some memorabilia from the Victory Lap uh, promotional campaign that Dope Promoter did. Uh, I got to spin. I saw some performers. We got to carry the flag. Smoked a lot of weed. It was super dope. Los Globos, I love that venue. Um, super tight vibes. And then after... I went to the after hours uh, with Verbs, DJ Party Dad, and I partied till like 5.30 in the morning. And then uh, Thursday, I did Border X, followed by the uh, our monthly, The Society at Mal's Bar. Border X was popping, Mal's Bar not so much. I think we really got to go harder on the promo next month, uh, book the acts a lot sooner. I mean, there's a lot of potential in that building. They have a good sound system. They got uh, affordable drinks, but it's all on us to make, make it better. So if you came out, super appreciate you. If if you haven't checked it out, we'll be back next month. And then uh, Friday was Speakeasy, La Clica Podcast Takeover. And let me tell you, dog, it's probably the best show that we've done all year. Um, we hit like $2,000 at the bar. We probably had about 300 people in there. It was super packed. They did a live recording of a podcast, which actually went off without a hitch, all things considering. All three rooms were packed up. And honestly, like, it was dope for me to just be able to sit back and, like, get wasted and not have to work and just see everything pop off. That's, like, my favorite part about being an event organizer is just, like, the day of just, like, getting to chill, which doesn't always happen. So super dope. And then uh, what did I do Saturday, Sunday? Oh, Golden Road, my uh, brunch has now kicked off Saturday and Sunday. And then I did Indy and the Art Walk after. So it was a full, full, full event schedule. Um, super blessed to be this busy, but also a lot of work and keeps me tired and on my toes. Um, but that's what I do this shit for. That's why I quit my job. That's why I moved back to LA. So dreams come true, man. Just keep working towards them. And without further ado, let me get to my guests. Am I pronouncing this right? We are the Boulevard? Mm -hmm. We are the Boulevard. All right. Sweet. Say hi, people. Come on. Yeah. Don't be shy. Hi, guys. Uh, what's up? <laughs> Thanks for having us. Yeah, no problem. Uh, this is the most people I've had in the studio. So bear with us if we have some like mic passing around issues going on. Um, 
let me just start off how I start off every podcast, and y'all could answer whoever wants to kick it off. I always ask, like, who you are and what do you do? So in this case, why don't you tell us what instrument you play or whatever, and, like, yeah, we'll start there. Sure. Uh, I'm Nix. I'm the singer of The Boulevard. Uh, my name is Danny, and I play guitar. Okay. My name is Bobby. I play bass. All right. And, yeah, let's do a little mic switcheroo. Yeah, I like My name is Sergio Vargas, and I play guitar. So guitar, bass, singer. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, we're yeah. actually missing. We have a drummer uh, too, but yeah, we're not a little drummer. <laughs> I, ass- I assume there was a drummer, so why don't you give him a shout out? Who's your drummer? Uh, uh, Andy G. Andy G. Miss <laughs> <laughs> you, baby. Not in the house, but <laughs> sorry you couldn't be here, Andy. But you wouldn't have had a mic anyway, so it worked out. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. <laughs> uh, and how many years have y'all been a band? How long have you been playing? Let's just get straight into the history a little bit. Yeah, oh, actually, yeah. I feel like. Maybe Sergio, if you want to kick it off, because you're the oldest All member. Right. The oldest member. <laughs> so, yeah, I've, I've been jamming with uh, Andy, who's the drummer. We've been t- playing together for uh, probably 40 years, kind of like just knowing each other, going up to Santa Barbara, him, him coming to Hollywood and, and just jamming out. We'd always have a good vibe until we decided to, you know, find some more people to play some music and write something. So eventually along the ride, we got Danny. Um, Danny's been playing with me in some other projects. He's killing it. And then uh, we got Nix. Got me off a of Craigslist. Ooh, like a year ago, <laughs> actually. To get all the good yeah, stuff, Yeah, but yeah, they that had was, this issue had with everything. singers and mm-hmm. people kept just things would happen and they did a craigslist ad and i answered it went to a house with a bunch of guys i didn't know and <laughs> here we are well thank you for being so brave uh because courage that's like a lot to have. Oh, we're sweethearts man Come oh on. yeah i knew as soon as i walked in i was like these guys are fine but you had to walk in to figure that out i did right yeah. i you did you walked in and be like oh these fools are psycho killers 100 percent. you would have been too late let me tell you i shared my location i did oh, yeah. she's <laughs> like if you don't hear from me she's in a, a couple girl. hours call the cops come yeah. find me please <laughs> um yeah, and then, then uh, bobby's uh, just, our most recent yeah, addition yeah, reason we got this awesome genius on the base man just killing it yeah it's probably like a month or two yeah, yeah let me, was, let me was, hear mic on mic on mic on <laughs> it's april so it was like two months ago yeah yeah about apology. two months ago i joined uh he saw my bass instructor and then he put out an ad in the school i go to musicians institute and i was the only one who responded to it and we all jammed together. We all get just all meshed really well together, and that's just all. worked. We like yeah. didn't have to keep looking. It yeah. was like you're it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so you said bass instructor. I'm curious about that. Is there some kind of educational aspect to this band that I need to know about? I well, I mean, not, I go to school at Musicians Institute. So, okay, um, MI. That's a big deal. I yeah. have a drummer that went there. He's a beast. Oh yeah. 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 I graduated from MI too. Let me get in there. Oh yeah, yeah. This is gonna be awkward. Shout out to <laughs> MI. I graduated from there. Uh, shout with out. The, uh, he said a shout out. Yeah. So yeah. Um, yeah, guitar program and also um, artist independent. How, and are you also trained? Yeah, yeah. Actually, I went to that school and uh, the chair or the, his instructor is actually the chair of the bass program, and he's uh, a brilliant guy, like easy down person to talk to. He doesn't hold himself like, to, like a, a musician, like a musician, like yeah, a super, but he's like, also like, like a super cool. type dude. Yeah, yeah, he's like the first thing he asked me is like, "Hey, how's your music going?" And I already graduated, and he's like, "Oh, like my music's going great. We're actually looking for a bass player," which is. You know, like coincidental because we just need a bass player. He's right. Like, I'm the guy. Like, I'm gonna put up this ad. Like, send me email some stuff, and I'll give it out to my students. And then Bobby was the first one to hit me up, and like we just like jammed really good. And most importantly, we just vibed well. You know, because yeah. like, you could be like really good talentfully. And, like, right, right. And you're an yeah. asshole, and no one wants to work with you. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no one likes that. <laughs> How does it feel being like new to the group and like coming into this dynamic and having to be the new guy? Honestly, I mean, I don't really feel that way anymore. I just feel like we all get along so well. I don't really feel like the new guy anymore. That's good. I just don't. And that's you a know? short pound of time. Yeah. Good job. I mean, yeah. we had our first show this last Friday. With uh, him in the band? Yeah, with him. Like That was kind the of the deal breaker. You know. Yeah. Deal breaker or deal maker? They're deal maker. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> well, you're what? not in the band anymore? <laughs> <laughs> this is new to me. <laughs> uh, so are you trained in singing? Are you vocally trained? Uh, I am vocally trained, but not from MI. Um... I've just taken voice lessons my whole life, and I went to a weird arts high school in Denver uh, where we all had majors. And you could choose um, what you wanted to do. Exactly. And then I uh, came of out, went to UCLA, did acapella, oh, pitch perfect style, go Bruins. <laughs> and uh, then I quit my acapella group to start a rock band. <laughs> hey, that's dope. The rest is history. Uh, so this feels like just uh, this is the first time meeting you. I have not done any research. I'm just like going off the cuff. It seems like very. Um, it seems like, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Feels like very, mm, like the universe puts y'all together. Like yeah, yeah. Craigslist, 
only guy to answer the <laughs> yeah, like, ad, yeah, yeah. and he doesn't even feel like the new guy anymore. Do you feel like there's like an energy in the group right now where it feels like this is the way it's supposed to be going? Because that's how I feel when I just met y'all, you know? Oh, it's like springing forward for sure, you know? Yeah, it does feel really good. Once we start playing, once we get the songs going and everybody's just in their own place and we're just coming together, it feels really good. So the music is... It's it's just as soon as the music feels good, everybody's all right. Everybody's cool with it, right? Right. So just coming up from that, just just it's just it's an easy ride with these people. That's it's cool. Easy. So um, what what city do you all hail from? Because usually where you practice is the city you represent, or sometimes like, oh we're from this city or we're from that city. So when you go out on stage and you're like, we are the Boulevard from what's like the city that comes to mind that you're representing. Well, the Boulevard actually came from Hollywood Boulevard. Okay. So we kind of have that, like, Hollywood vibes, Hollywood aesthetic. But, I mean, these guys are from Colombia. <laughs> and, and we're all over, yeah. And I'm from Pittsburgh, which is, like, opposite of... Everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The one thing I'd say Hollywood because you know we went to school there and that's where we used to hang out a lot and party right. and all that. Also Reseda, the Valley, that's where the drummer lives, so that's where we rehearse a lot and we got a lot of friends Jump out space, there. Space, the garage. You yeah, yeah. Our answer yeah. there, you know, it's like it's, it's safe. usually the drummer's house because he has the most shit to move. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's, yeah. Really, that's, really right that. that's right. That's right. <laughs> that's cool. So um, I have to ask now that. Um, I feel like Hollywood isn't what it used to be. Are y'all feeling like that? Because I, I read an article recently about how like Hollywood used to be where, like the weirdos and the outcasts and everybody was going out there to find a scene and now it's kind of been like gentrified and glamorized and it's all about like hip people with money and like foreigners. Like do y'all feel that? Oh, like, 100%, dude. Yeah? yeah, for sure. You know, there's a huge influx to it. Uh, every, you know, it's like shifting to the entertainment shifting. You know, the image of what a musician is is different. It's like DJs. Like every time I advertise my shows, I'm like, "Oh, where are you DJing at?" And I'm like, uh, "I'm like, I'm playing a show." It's I'm like, "Oh, where are you DJing?" DJ. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. <laughs> not 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 to tell this, you know. That's, no, that's different. I mean, I'm a DJ. I'm not I'm not offended at all. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, just, it's just that's like a new a new thing, and people follow that and have that trend. So you know, Hollywood is just you know it's Hollywood. It's glamour. It's well, because Nick said Hollywood aesthetic, and I feel like when I thought about that, like that is changing. You know, the aesthetic of Hollywood is not what it used to be. Like you said, like rock bands aren't really like what Hollywood's built on anymore a lot of the great venues are gone like Hollywood is not really like Holly weird it's not like the Hollywood we grew up with you know so I think that's like um you're like a time capsule in that you know like yeah it's, it's, I think you're hearkening back to like a previous time right? yeah for sure I mean for sure yeah but also the music's more, more like the most musicians playing instruments it's kind of it's moved on into Silver Lake and Echo Park and those are the places where you kind of see a lot of kind of you know music happening live and so that's we kind of like we want to get into that part and start playing a lot of shows around there too i live down the street too so we should be doing but that. we love uh we also love like the strip and like where rock and roll really had its heyday right. and there's still like a rock scene like a kind of a concentrated like rock and roll scene that exists like in the whiskey a go-go and the rainbow yeah. and like all the venues that we've played and we yes. love it there because it's like you get the like old school hollywood rock right. and rollers that all kind of cling there you know yeah 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 they're like holy they're like still holding on to their yeah. space you know like they have <laughs> their the totally the rainbow, and you, you see ron see jeremy it rainbow, it's man. great <laughs> yeah. no, it's great i mean it's it's just a lot of music exposure too you know like we there's a lot of venues for you to play in hollywood too definitely definitely and, uh and it's like kind of like a throwback i guess like a little right. time capsule and it's just refreshing too you know because it's like just rock in general but we have shows all over the place we have shows in the valley we have shows in Silver Lake we have shows of course I think it's everywhere. so it's I, I would say maybe like more like Los Angeles like just the city itself because right. it's a huge city you yeah know? like everything's like a rock throws away you know you're like 15 minutes and you're ready like in K-Town another 15 Unless minutes you're and traffic. you're like <laughs> yeah I was like <laughs> not depending on the time of day <laughs> like, <laughs> exactly no I just think it's um, it's like a it's like there's just so many things changing right now and like with the internet it's a lot easier to play shows anywhere and i feel like growing up in la hollywood used to be like oh once we get there you know like that's like when you play the whiskey mm -hmm. you play your first show at the whiskey you're like fucking made it bro yeah. it's like this historic whiskey right and now it's like it's almost like 
people growing up today, those aren't the, the places they dream of playing. That's like people from outside of LA come and try to play those venues. And now it's more like the Silver Lakes or like the more like hip dive bars that you could like kind of build out your own scene. And I feel like mm -hmm. that's the future because with the internet and promotion and you're able to reach people in a different way. And I feel like that's, that's kind of where the shift is going. And I wonder, like y'all are obviously on the edge of that, you know, being a rock band from Hollywood like do you feel like there's new places that you want to play and like where like the scene is different now than it used to be yeah absolutely I mean I think there's so many uh, when you're talking about like DJs and things there's so many venues that um, I think have been not as focused on like bands right and I think it would be really cool to like go into something like that like something that's been more traditionally a club or something that you know and just a more outdoor type venues, things like just, festival style. Yeah, festivals. Well, summer's coming. So, like, <laughs> it is to the kind season. Of thing, is getting a lot of bands <laughs> together to kind of like put on your own show is kind of like becoming to me more what bands should be doing. Just talking to friends, talking to people who are making music right now and putting a bill, putting your music that you want to hear together on you know let's say the first band is doing some reggae the next one moves a little darker the next one is a little more punky and stuff so like I think that's how like I've seen a lot of bands doing that right now. Which is cool. It's kind of creating your own, you know, you know, your own people, your own people, your own the music that you want to hear, and just putting that on a bill. It's fucking awesome. No, yeah, and, and I you mean, can do it everywhere. I'm I'm planning a couple festivals right now, so I definitely know that that's kind of that's what's exciting right now. When especially when you're doing it yourself, because you can curate everything, and you exactly. can choose the theme and the vendors and who's involved and the music, and it's not so corporate. You know, yeah. That's what I like about it. I think it's more about the individuals to put, you know, put your ass to work and get your friends out there <laughs> to come out. I think that's what people should be doing. Well, and I think it's more likely as a band if you're playing like a festival setting um, for other people to like discover you because it's like you're not just like, hey, come to this one venue to see me. It's like you're coming yeah. to this event right. and you happen to see this band and right. you're like, wow, that band's dope. Like, I'm gonna follow them. I'm gonna listen to their music and. That's huge. So for all the people who know nothing about you, including myself, uh, <laughs> how would you classify your music? What's the genre or the vibe or what would you call it? Or like, how do you, how do you convey to a complete stranger, like what you play? Or like, if, how do you like, Oof. oh, come to our show for. We got a lot of high energy. Okay. A lot high of high energy, energy in your face. Um, also, the new, the new stuff we're writing is a little more sensual. Oh, yeah, I like that. <laughs> We're getting, Got yeah. a little hot and bothered. <laughs> Colombiano says central. You know uh, he means uh, it. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're trying to incorporate those roots, all that salsa into some rock and get a lot of dynamics and just good fucking awesome rhythms, rhythms behind her vocals, you know, yeah. just amplify the stuff she's writing about, which is fucking awesome. And what do you write about? I write about real life experiences. A lot of my songs are based on people or just emotions like sometimes I, I think when I'm distraught is when I am most creative because I just have this feeling and I need to channel it into something and so I just kind of try to write out that feeling on paper I always tell so. people like heartbreak music is like the best they're like why do you have to be why can't you write about love it's like because I'm in love I don't want to you want to hang out with that I person I want to be in yeah. love I don't want to write about how in love I am I want to actually be in love you know it's like yeah. it's when the love goes that you're like oh my god no yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know for, sure. for me just actually being in love and just experiencing a person that it makes you feel amazing I could just go home and play two chords on my guitar and I'm like this is a fucking song I like, guess because you play music and I do vocals it's like it's hard to vocalize love see you know? I feel that in the same way because they yeah. do the music because yeah. like you feel the music oh this feels beautiful but it's to me it's yeah, like okay what trying am I trying to capture that lady that woman the way she moves on my guitar and yeah I like but that. that's what's really cool I think about the way we all collaborate is because right. what typically happens is um, like one of them will bring like an idea for a song or sometimes I mean sometimes Sergio just writes out like a full fleshed song and then we all learn it um, and kind of get the structure down and then I take it home and I listen to it and I listen to it and I kind of see like make a melody and make lyrics and my interpretation of whatever emotion that they created and it becomes this mix like sometimes i think the direction i go is not exactly what he had thought but it's like this very cool creative like intersection that but we that's have. what makes it dynamic yeah, right is that that's why you like working with people because they take it somewhere that you didn't see absolutely that's the whole point. Exactly. absolutely so who do you think you make music for 
is there like a demographic or a type of person? And just to give you some examples, like I had a, a metal band in here and they were like, we make music for the outcasts and like we want them to know they're not alone and like they can come be outcasts together. And, you know, so that's like that's like that's their vision. Right. And I'm just curious, like when you're making music and you're making songs, are you thinking about like who you're going to impact Dude, or who's this person? Honest, uh, music lovers. Like anyone that enjoys like beautiful music, because we try to, you know, it's it's rock, and that's kind of been like a desensitized genre. It's like, oh, it's just eighth now. It's like just like stupid chords, like it's four chords, whatever, you know. But like we actually try to push the genre forth and make it like evolve and keep it hip. Like he was like Sergio was mentioning, getting these, like, these cool like salsa rhythms or like syncopations, and just making it uh, alive, you know. So it's anyone who really enjoys music and the evolve of it and the complexities within the, the, sim the simplicities of it, it's like we'd really enjoy it. Gotcha. Yeah, it's like if you look at it from a musician standpoint, it's like it ends complex rhythms and everything. But like if you just listen to it for, or if you have it from a, listening from it, sorry. Like a consumer standpoint? Yeah, a consumer standpoint. Um, it's really friendly to everybody. I really think that a lot of people will like it, and I just think it needs to be out there and be heard. And once people hear it, then it'll get a lot of attention and everything. I really do. I, I believe in it. You know, I truly believe in it. Well, I would hope so, if yeah. you're in the band, you know? Like, I would hope you believe in the music you're playing. So, um, do any of them ever help you with the lyrics or concept? Like, will one of the songwriters come by and be like, this song's about a girl, or this song's about a party, or this song's about... Do you ever get that kind of collaboration? Occasionally. So, usually he, um, like, has a title when, if, if you're to write a song, it's like... Or actually, in general, like, when they have... a piece of music an instrumental it'll have a title and you kind of get ideas yeah off the title. so there was this one that was do as you please and i was like i love that i love that yeah. so i have to incorporate that somehow into the lyrics and so i kind of like created this whole thing around it and you know i sometimes we'll talk about it i think we probably should do that more so that it's more like um but andy but, andy brings a lot of ideas right yeah for sure our drummer brings a lot of like he'll bring like one liners he had this really great one um her eyes are just like the city spark green polluted and pretty it's a good one why are you here andy where you at andy andy g you got poetry baby no, that's nice that's nice and then you took that and kind of built a whole song around right that. right right yeah so um this is probably like a corny one we've been talking about venues and shows are there any kind of shows on your like to-do list it, it, like coachella obviously every band wants to play coachella are there any the other like forum i like to play the forum the man. forum just being right here in inglewood hell yeah right <laughs> inglewood. come on the troubadour the troubadour yeah. okay yeah. back to that throwback classic for venue. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure the wiltern the wiltern another like la icon of Fuck a venue you. yeah just like la or everywhere anywhere yeah uh, dude. the royal albert hall would be really cool I know a lot of bands that I like that play there, like the Killers. That would be really cool. But All right. Where is that? I don't know. <laughs> I was going to ask you. I know. I know. It sounds royal. It sounds like UK. I think that's New York, isn't it? New York? I, I don't know. know. I don't know. You just know the venue. Yeah. You're, I don't I, know places. Anything with Hall. How that's are you going to know how to get there if you don't know where it's at, bro? I type it in on my phone. I get the address. It's touche. This guy uses Google, and he's smart for that. No, actually, I had a band in here said that they want to do, like, an East Coast tour because you can hit more cities oh, over yeah, there, sure. you know? So just, like, things like that, I always feel like it's good to have goals, you know? For sure. That's how you work towards them and shit. Oh, yeah, we're keeping in mind maybe, like, a West Coast tour, too. Like, okay. Just, like, I-5, you know, like... Yeah, just, like, Oregon, hit up the coast and, uh, yeah. Or maybe just California, you know? It could be something... There's not that much in huge. California. There's, like, San Diego, L.A., and then a bunch of nothing. And then you Francis get to, <laughs> then you get to SF, yeah. and then yeah. So, so, so yeah, sorry, be, Bakersfield and Merced and Modesto. There's like, nothing to do in your bro. spots. Yeah. Yeah. I'm an asshole because they probably know it. They're like, I know, dude. They're like, we know, we know. It's like our schools don't even get good attendance, you know. Um, so where do y'all see yourselves in five years? Obviously, are there are you planning to add any new members to the band? Is this the unit? Do you guys feel like this is the complete thing? Oh, I mean, this yeah. is working. Dude. This is a function. Like we we're we're about to release uh, four new songs in the EP. Okay. Despite our single already being out for a year, so it's <laughs> gonna be four new songs for new music so then it'll be a five song ep in total well not really because it's just Cause a single. single's like a single okay yeah, yeah. and then you have an ep and then on top of that we have uh more singles coming out on top of that we're working in we the studio two more singles coming out and then we're just writing a lot of new stuff we yeah. got materials for days i mean i think i think just getting more things recorded more content out there um 
music videos and it's huge yeah now, i just now getting and some and eyeballs now. on you it you know YouTube, for, <laughs> sure. Yeah, for sure everyone's on youtube get people excited about your brand and well, yeah. um i think in five years we should be touring at least europe yeah yeah we should probably <laughs> i like that i like America. that yeah, I yeah, we're Argentina, thinking here i was Chile, i was thinking here brazil i want to hit yeah, all the little parts, man. let's see the world exactly yeah. you bring the party there and then you bring people out there you meet people on every single different country and I just I'm fascinated with that. I like to ask this question because I always feel like it's an um, opportunity to see how much the band is manifesting. Like, what are y'all? What are your dreams for yourselves? You know, because I feel like unless, like you said, if you don't put those goals out there, you don't get them. You have to like speak right. that shit out to the universe. Like, you wanna you wanna tour international? You gotta say that shit. You gotta believe it, right? Every day when you wake up, like, hey, we're working towards that Brazil tour. We're working towards that. You know, so I, I always like to throw that question in there just to see like how far. Like, I'm always surprised with how big the band's dream because right. I, I, I feel that puts them on a better trajectory to yeah, get somewhere yeah. dope. Even if they don't get that, if they're thinking big, they're going to get somewhere, right? Well, so. it's hard because I feel like we live in a world where people tell you don't dream big. Like, it's like, right. okay, but you need to be realistic. And it's like, well, this is... <laughs> <laughs> what yeah. is real, though? That's I mean, true. give someone, yeah. like, seven grams of psilocybin and ask them what is real. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see if they still want to think in this box, right? Like, we'll yeah. let me know. Let me know when you come back how that is. No, but it's a good point. But I also feel like at the same time that society is telling you Hey, be realistic. Have that backup plan. Have that job. Technology saying, hey, there's like infinite amount of potential out there, and you can start a company where strangers get into your car and you get paid for it. You know what I mean? Like, there's like, yeah. there's all kinds of opportunity right now. And like you said, content, videos, eyeballs. That's kind of what it's all about. So yeah. I think it could happen so quickly too. That's the thing. It could just happen. Like it could just happen so quickly, and you just don't know what to expect sometimes. And it's, I mean, as long as you're hustling and in the grind, you're going to be ready for it. Yeah, you know? exactly. Because if yeah. you're constantly putting out music and putting out new videos and new EPs, like, and the buzz starts building and then people want to, they want to book you or they want that, that, you know, that press kit, you have it because you're ready. And yeah. so, like, you always got to be, like, on that next edge, you know? Can I ask you a question? Anything. Um, so you said you moved, you quit your job and you moved back to L.A. Right. So what was, like, the catalyst for that, like... Um, so, and I've said this on a couple other podcasts, but, uh, just, just to, so that it's here. Um, I was, I went to school at UC San Diego. Okay. In SD. And, uh, I got two degrees, one in history and one in the study of religion, focusing on Buddhism. Um, but the whole time I was there, I was doing events and entertainment. And, uh, I ended up getting hired by the university to do programming for undergraduate students. Mm -hmm. So I spent like a year and a half working for three different departments, kind of marketing, promo, booking gigs, like just doing community-based like stuff for students. And um, got to a point where like I was having a lot of fun, but I really wasn't doing what I felt like I needed to be doing. And I was spending a lot of nights just getting like blacked out drunk and like spending a lot of days hungover at work. And it kind of became this weird uh, like pattern for me where I was pretty much like intoxicated all day and not um like really enjoying my life the experience that i was having i was making a hell of, like a lot of money and living in a beautiful city in the world and uh i wasn't like happy happy i wasn't like fulfilled right and um yeah i was on contract and the contract was coming to an end and there was a chance to like jump into a new role and work f and continue the work i was doing and i just said no and I was like, I got to go back to L.A. and reconnect with my people, reconnect with my roots and kind of get back to what I need to be doing. And that's trying to create sustainable economies for creatives in an area where there's no programs or blueprint or any kind of roadmap on how to travel, do an international tour. How do you do that? Where's the map that tells you, OK, here's the steps you take? Like. Where are, where are the institutions that give artists the, like, the blueprint to say, hey, you hit these four or five, six events, you make this package of content, and we'll get it all to the right agents, and we'll put it in the hands of the people who can book you, and we'll, we'll get you paid 
pay you for shows, pay you to perform, pay you to show up. It sounds crazy. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it does. But the last the last year and a half, going on two years now, that's what I've been able to do, you know. And so, like, it's little, it's local, but you know, we're cre I'm creating this blueprint and how to get how to get artists like even thinking about that stuff. You know how many people have had sit in these chairs and they're like, oh, we don't care about money. Like, we do this shit for the love and, like, it's all about the music and if we're playing fucking backyard shows for the rest of our lives, like, it's cool. And, like, that's cool if that's what you want to do. But how about we get you, like, an all-expenses-paid tour, like, on another continent? Wouldn't that be dope, too? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, you know, like, wouldn't that be tight? I mean, you have to, like start doing a little like more social media stuff and you have to start at, you know like there's work to it it's not it's not easy you know there's a lot of like hours that you do non-creative stuff to be able to get there yeah it's but it's, it's like it's worth the music it. it's the package is how do you talk to people how do you get it out there you know who are you really pushing to get your fucking music there so it's just it's a lot it's a lot and i think it's fun too it's dude it's, it's fun because when you're all, killing it yeah. You look back on where you're at and what you've been able to do, it's so worth it, you know? It but in the really moment, good. it's like, it gets very, you start feeling like you're in that box. Yeah. And you can't get out of it. And you're like, it's like all around you. And everyone's telling you to stay in it. Right. Right. Yeah. And so that's why I quit and that's where I came yeah, from. And you got to follow your gut, right? And I'm happy now. I like, see I'm it. I so see happy it, now. Like, I get to sleep in on Mondays, you know? Like,. <laughs> <laughs> I get to wake up right before my radio show and come to the studio and have an So you just awesome woke up. I just woke up. I swear to God. I just, just, woke, up. I just woke up. You got me here with no gas, too. Yeah, yeah. My shit's on empty right now. I don't know how I'm going to get home, but I'm so happy right now. And it's like, I'm having an amazing conversation with some talented, educated individuals. And, like, I wouldn't trade it for anything, you know? That's fuck amazing. Yeah. Oh, man. That's, thank you. Yeah, fuck yeah. Yeah, no. And honestly, like, the... F um, like, I'm just a real, because I went to school, like, I'm just a real, like, ed I'm pro-education. So when I hear that y'all are, like, studied musicians, it's like, I don't know, maybe this is bougie and biased or whatever, but, like, I, like an another level of respect for y'all comes into my head because you probably had to learn a bunch of shit that you did not like to yeah. do. <laughs> yeah. You know, you had to learn classical music. You had to learn how to, like, read, write. Yeah, and for read. Listen, for <laughs> music. Like, writing beats and shit. <laughs> like, I, I, I took a couple, I took a couple Ear classes. training. Yeah, right? Like, what notes are these? Uh, you know, like, can, yeah. can you sing this melody in time, on yeah, tempo, sure. in time signature? <laughs> what is the time signature? Is this a dotted half note? Or, a, you know? I, I, I <laughs> I took a couple of theory classes, so I know what it's like. I could not hang. I did not yeah. have the discipline. So when I know that y'all went through a program, I'm just like, okay, these fools, yeah. these fools really want it. Like, it's, oh, it's, for sure. But yeah. it's also fun. You to want to get more vocabulary be, within your music. You yeah. know what I mean? But you don't want to be constricted to it. It's not like you don't want to have a box over your music. You know? Right. It's like, oh, this is the classical way. Or this is the authentic. Because you have to do this. You but know, if you know the rules, you can break them. Exactly. Yeah. That's yeah. where you have fun, dude. Because you just do whatever you feel. I also meet session players who can't play anything off the page. That's what it is, yeah. That's how kind of my school is. Like, I, they train you to be, like, a session player, and I was never like that. I always wanted to be in a band like this, so I played a bunch of different types of music just so I can just be versatile. I, want, I would rather have versatility than just be a session player. No, and I think that's always like that. That's that give and take, right? Yeah. Because a lot of people who are not trained, they can solo, they can jam, they can come up with, like, weird shit. Yeah. And other folks who just their whole life was training, they don't know how to jam. Yeah, exactly. They're like, what key are we in? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what what's the what's the uh what's the what's the vibe? What's the vibe you want me to play? Like what should I play here? Like what's it's like count? no fool, yeah. you figure it out. You like feel it. <laughs> <laughs> that's on you, man. So um how is it being a female front person of an all male band? Is that like I a, love it. You love it? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> my boys <laughs> no it's great um i think we have a really great dynamic and i'm all for female fronted rock bands i don't feel like there's enough right and so i really appreciate these guys like giving me a chance to do that and kind of i think it gives us a different edge it gives us a different sound and um yeah i you know i Nicole, feel very comfortable with them I, i'm one of the boys <laughs> point of views, you know? i'm all about it i just feel like Definitely, like, in today, 2019, with, like, Me Too and, like, just, like, a more recognition of how... Women's uh, rights. Yeah, how unfair it is. Like, I feel like I have to, like, dig in a little bit. Like, do you feel like you get treated differently in the rock scene because you're a woman? Do you think people don't give you enough, like, of your props as a front woman because 
You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you no, I know what you mean. I, I think it's important not to like get those stories. Personally, out there. felt that, which has been great. A blessing, right? And I think that, like, yeah, absolutely. Um, I think in arts in general, like women have been in there for a while, and like even you know you're looking at like Joan Jett, like there were women Joan who Baez. definitely paved their way into you know back to Janis Joplin. Janis Joplin yeah, about, yeah, of course. And I think that or they, like Alanis Morissette, or like any of these, hundred percent, yeah, super sure. badass, and they had to really prove that they were badass. Right. But now, like people, I think kind of have that as a reference point, and so it's not as foreign of a concept. And right. you know, you've got like Hailstorm and Paramore and all these like really cool, more recent female fronted bands. And but even then, Paramore is a while now. When was the last time they came out with a new yeah. song? That's true. Like, Garbage is like you know the last big you know like there's definitely yeah, a couple names, yeah, yeah like um, Evanescence right. But it's yeah. like like you said, more. there's we not more females there out needs there. to be more yeah. And I wonder like if. If there was like, because you always hear about it in STEM, right? It's like, what could we do to make STEM more available? It's like, is there something that we could do to make young girls be more down? Or like, can rock be more welcoming of young girls? That's the question that I think like is on the tip of my mind. Seeing this dynamic, because I yeah. think it's cool. For sure, I think it's dope. And yeah. I mean, I think the way we do it is just everybody knows kind of like what to do in the band, and we we don't really like tell anybody what to do everybody right. comes in with their ideas and it's it's open so when the music comes out when she's singing it's just it feels like its own message and it's very strong and it feels very unique and just original so i i want females and other kids out there to see that you know what i mean find your own voice find your friends you know talk about ideas and put them together and fucking sing about well, it. well i think right? it's just that it's leading by example it's like yeah. how do you get women like more women who are interested in it in the same way of like science, all that STEM. It's just like show lead them. by example, yeah. show them like, here's some badass women that are in this scene and who are killing it. And another kind of, I, I'd say the most difficult thing about like being a woman in that environment is like, you don't want to overly sexualize it. Yeah. But like in a lot of ways, there's pressure to do that because that's what sells. Cause right, a hundred percent. And dudes in, will come to the show if you're like half naked. Absolutely. And, yeah. So it's like it's can you show an example of somebody who is like really badass and awesome and is not necessarily like utilizing a, that? Like a parody of itself. Over, right. Like, to, it becomes like a a caricature. Yeah, and not that that's bad at all, but no. it's just like to have the full scheme of that, and not to feel like you have to like fall into that box. Are there any other uh, bands, like, locally that you've played with that have women front people that you can, like, give a shout-out to? Or are you kind of like a unicorn right now? No, I mean, we played with this great band. They actually just broke up, which is pretty sad. (laughs) 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 I need a wah, wah, wah. Um, But Royal Distortion... Actually, sorry, we didn't play with them, but we played... um, with like various bands that played with them and we like went to a bunch of their shows and they've been to our shows but um they were awesome they were the house band at the whiskey for a while and really badass female fronted band um and there's there's quite a few i feel like around la so they're there and they just have to so maybe we need to start putting together like showcases with these folks and making like a big like that'd be cool make it more of a thing like hey fucking yeah like female fronted yeah like front woman Yeah. You know, some, <laughs> something. That, that, that was cheesy, but something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. That'd be dope. Yeah, 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 dope. Bill of hey, David, you hear that, him. David? Yeah. Knife flare. Let's do this. <laughs> oh, David Hernandez? Yeah. <laughs> David's my boy. He's my neighbor. Yeah. Oh, well, that means we're both from HP? Yeah. Yeah. Well, cool. On huh. California Street. I live on, I'm not going to tell people where I live, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In my full address. I, know, you know what? I, I live on Florence you. State <laughs> at the rallies. That's where you can find me now. <laughs> <laughs> Stuff, dude. Actually, I just wanted to comment on you, sir, because I feel like um, I've had a couple of bands come in here, and it's like the the person who started the band and who like writes all the music is usually like, "This is my band," and like mm-hmm. they, these people play like for me type of deal. And I feel like you have a very more like, "This is our thing together," and we're we're like a family, and it's like it's very non-possessive, and I dig that. And, like, is that, like, a something that you did intentionally? Or is that something you had to learn over time, like, in the earlier days where you're, like, this is my group, mm, this is, I'm, I, uh, I'm the creative direction, you know? Like, did you ever have that ego issue? No, nah, I mean, I mean, I've always been really um, certain of what I write. I know what I like. But I also like friends and I like people. I like, I'm an organizer, too, so I talk to people every single day and I hear their stories. And growing up, just with friends, I always like their point of view. And like you said, like, I think... 
when you do when it, when you're just doing yourself sometimes it could be, be really boring so having another point of view uh, something that i just couldn't think about and then she just brings something that just blows my mind i love that and i think that's crucial for you know we're human beings we're all together all the time i think it'd be like kind of illogical just to do it by yourself all right, the time. right 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 yeah it's just we need collective you know ideas so yeah 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 that's when it just becomes unique and i just like danny brings his own thing you know, he knows how to write bass lines where, like, sometimes I'm, my guitar is just a little too busy. He knows how to step off and just kind of write and stuff like that, and I like that. And yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I let them just kind of, like, just grow within the song, and people just find their place in it, and it just works really naturally. It's more organic. Yes. Is what it feels like. Yeah. And that's, sure. like, that's my favorite type of music, you know? It's, yeah. like, comes from, like, that soul consciousness shit that's, yeah. like, we don't even know where it's coming from exactly. sometimes. Exactly, so each song is different. Each song, like, sometimes is kind of like, Andy, I want you to do this kind of beat for this part, and then he just, for the next part, he does something crazy. I'm like, yeah, yeah. fucking, let's do that, too. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know yeah. What yeah. I mean? And sometimes we go have three different ideas, so let's try all, all of them, and then we'll listen back, and which one is the best good. idea, and which one works better. And that's how we do it here. That's cool. Yeah. All right, um, we're, like, in our last half of the show. This is, like, the part where I want to get... Um, advice or uh just like like fuck ups like things that like where you went down you're like oh you know what just don't do that you know like just <laughs> you could talk to younger versions of yourselves and be like hey this music thing is gonna work out but you know like uh so just go around and see like any upcoming musicians anybody working in a band like if you have any like two cents for them this is like your this your impart your words of wisdom on a generation of young listeners who may one day grow up to be in rock bands you know um, starting here since she's sure right here. Yeah. i mean i think the biggest thing that i've learned and i am still learning is that yes there's goals but there's not necessarily like one end game it's like i've been in bands before and um you know i had one that didn't end as well and i was kind of like you know well, that was a waste of time and da, da, da. but it's like no that was a chapter in my life and i learned a lot from it mm -hmm. and so it's like i kind of have learned to think about each, you know, it's like, are we just trying to like get to this point and then we're done? It's like, no, it's, it's a constantly moving thing. Everything's happening for a reason and they're all chapters in your life and there's something to be gained in every aspect. It's, it's about the journey. Like even where we are right now, like we're not doing international tours, but it's like, there's something to be said about what we're doing now that I think makes us successful. And so it's like, don't define your success necessarily by this big overarching goal. Like really enjoy the journey and enjoy those chapters oh, that's, that was great thanks <laughs> we, all, we all agree thank you and that's why she's the vocal <laughs> I mean my advice would be to don't be afraid uh, it's it's uh, it's it's a process you know especially if you're starting out like as a teenager and you're just picking it up you know it's not going to be perfect and just make sure you're surrounded by a good group of friends that really love music and that aren't doing it to be like, oh, I want to be like famous. I want to have like bills I can throw around and like have this like fat pad. Just do it because you enjoy music. Yeah. And like, there's like some kind of like already like motive to even write cooler or to get better or to practice more to like be better because you have like friends that are like into music actually. So that just grows organically, as well. So don't be scared of like not being that great or like messing up. Just always practice, keep at it, and do it for the love. Do it for the love of music. Yeah. I think for me is being yourself and just expressing yourself like and just not being afraid to show who you are musically and just as a person and that to me is always what like meant the most is just being yourself and uh don't ever like don't let anybody else bother you what they say or anything just just stick to you if you're happy just be happy with yourself you got to be happy with yourself before you're can be happy with you know the with life so that's what I learned. That's deep. Yeah. That's like not even in music. That's just like <laughs> life in general. <laughs> I would say just don't be afraid to talk to everyone about what you're doing. Um, I've met a lot of people just because I'm on the, on the metro playing my guitar and they come talk to me and then we make good friends and then next day we're jamming and we're making cool songs. So just be open. Be friendly with people. Don't be, sh you know, this is my music. Don't touch it. You know what I mean? Yeah, don't yeah. get near it because it's super personal. No, man. Uh, once the music is done, it's like, as soon as it's recorded, it's for everyone. Right. It's out of your control. So just be really vocal about what you want to do and talk to your friends and get people involved in it. Don't be afraid to talk, pretty much. Put your thoughts out there. Dope. That's actually really good advice, man. I, like, I, I agree with everything that everybody just said, so there's not one thing that I'd be like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, we got 10 minutes. Okay. Um, social media handles, upcoming shows, upcoming projects, the name of the EP, anything you, this is your promotional time right here. Just yeah, just for sure. Shameless plug. <laughs> do it. Tell them how to shameless find you. Shameless plug. Yeah, yeah. Um, we we're on Instagram at we are the boulevard. That's BLVD. Um, and we post all of our stuff, really kind of filter it through there. So any show announcements, all of our EP information, the link to where to listen to our EP, that's all going to be through our Instagram. So definitely give that a follow. Um, our EP, uh, four song EP, it's going to be coming anywhere you listen to music. So we'll have it out on Spotify, iTunes, all that. Um, and that one's going to be called Dear Madness. And release date TBD, but I'd say, uh, I'd say early May. Yeah. Very, very early May. <laughs> That's like a month, like less than a month away. Yeah, That's yeah. How close you it's are. been a long time coming, though. We've been working on it. We're getting, that, we're getting the Masters on Wednesday. Wednesday. Oh, yes. so maybe May 1st. Mm-hmm. Let's tentatively say May 1st. Yeah, once so. you get the Masters, we just, we're check just it out. talking to the artists about the artwork and yeah, yeah. That ready it. to go. And we have uh, we have a really cool show. Um, next Tuesday, uh, the 23rd at Harvard and Stone, and that's actually a benefit concert for the Entertainment AIDS Alliance. Okay. Um, so it's a really good cause. It's a free show. Sweet. And um, Harvard and Stone is a really cool venue, yeah. so we're super yeah. stoked. We're playing with a couple um, other bands, uh, Shiver and um, I think... Karma Vulture? Karma Vulture, yeah. Um, so it should be a really great lineup, great show. Uh, starts at 9. We <laughs> totally go, man. Uh, I think I'm booked to DJ that day, but oh, sure. I feel like you, we, you, we got to get on your calendar early. Like, I feel like you're booked out probably. Yeah. A lot. Uh, you know, it's, it's a blessing and a curse. So yeah, no, there's a lot of cool shit I cannot do cause I'm already working, but, um, yeah, let me know ahead of time. Maybe Absolutely. the, maybe we could work together on the, uh, album release. Oh, that'd, that'd be, be great. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. We want to sit up, we want to sit up a couple of awesome. shows to yeah. promote all that for the next three months. I know. was actually, if I can give y'all a word of advice, yeah. um, go for it. You said the EP's taking a long time mm-hmm. to make, right? Mm-hmm. I would say you should spend as, not as much time, but like as much energy into how you're going to roll it out and promote it. Yeah. Okay. So that, like, I know the feeling of like, oh, we've been waiting for this thing and we want everybody to get it and like just put it out and like we want them to hear it. You got to be strategic. You got to be strategic because if you really out. want people to hear it and get those eyeballs, like it's key that like... There's a strategy, a marketing strategy, social media, artwork, music videos, like giveaways, things that like to make it like an event and make it a thing and actually kind of like build, generate buzz and not just say, hey, here's out on SoundCloud, like go listen to it. And then every week you're pro, you're promo, you're pushing the same. Here's the car other work. It's, it's available for download. Like it's like you should like little by little, like like maybe make singles of the four song or maybe release them like yeah, like, like, trailer. Like, like song by song like with a release I was talking to my brother about that because sometimes a lot of the bands they would power the four EP right and it just it gets traction for like three weeks and then it's fucking it's done so then like she, like the, even the band would feel like kind of like un- unsuccessful because of that so getting for example one song to be heard for like three weeks and then you put the other one f- for the next three weeks and at the end of those four songs put them all together in the bundle and, and know, sometimes and it's it even there. like having like like having all the materials ahead of time having all the songs all the music videos all the artwork all the flyers yeah. that way you can say okay here's here's the whole body of work exactly the whole package how do we how do we tease it out you know what do we put out so do we put out like maybe we put out off like we put out a song a week mm. And then we put out a music video a week. Okay, yeah. And then we put out, and then we play, a, then we do, a, we announce our tour. Mm-hmm. And we perform all these songs live. You know, like, have it be like this, this thing you build that, like, people actually, like, give a fuck about. Yeah. Because exactly. then you can post your shit up and it never gets heard and you're going to be all bummed out and mm-hmm. wonder why. And it's just like, there's, there's a lot that's of like that whole business now. side of it where it's like, well, yo. Back you, in the day you have, you know, um, um. We post we posters <laughs> and billboards yeah. and but radio not spots. Advice. You gotta go out there. You gotta put your billboards. You gotta do all that stuff yourself. Which no, is yeah, great. And no, it's it's like and it's a grind, you know. But like that would be my advice. That like try to think about spending as much time as you did creating it and how you're gonna market it and push it because it's super important. Or else your stuff's not gonna get yeah. heard or traction. It's not gonna be as big, you know. Yeah, like, hype, you know. You gotta hype yeah. it up. Especially like if you're using Instagram, Instagram's algorithm prioritizes videos. So 
make more videos make yeah. music videos make teaser videos do a trailer of just like you on a cell phone sitting like this like hey we are the boulevard like we got this new out you know like yeah. sure. coming out like make sure to check it out on this pre-order yada 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 and you know that can get like 300 views more than your song will get listens to yeah that's true yeah. you know what i mean yeah. so like no that's good that's good that's my two cents for y'all that's awesome thank, thank you, you. Yeah. <laughs> sweet all right. Um, well, that's our show. Thank you all for Thanks being so much here. for having us. Super awesome. appreciate you. Brittany, were we able to get their song downloaded? Oh, so we got your song. Yay. So why don't you tell me the name of this song and what's it about? And yeah, go. Uh, this is our title track on our EP. It's called Dear Madness. And um, it's kind of about going a little crazy in the party scene and somebody telling you to reel it back and kind of being like, you know what? I like it. So I came here for you a do reason. you, I'll do me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, if you heard my adventure time, I do like to party. So, so I can right. I can relate. I can relate. All right. Um, I'm here every Monday night, 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. You can catch me on all social media sites. Just Google S-H-N-E-A-K-Y or visit Schneeky.net, Schneeky E-N-T on Instagram, official Schneeky on Twitter, Facebook, and everything else. Um, thank you for joining us. Listen to Dear Madness. Make sure to follow We Are the Boulevard and uh, stay connected. Love y'all. Bye.